YCS Niagara Falls is over, and not only did Konami update the prizing, you get a Steam Deck now, we've known that for a while, but you get an empty picture frame to put all your cards in. You can buy that at Hobby Lobby or Michael's for probably $19.99, or maybe they just ordered it on Amazon. Also, Sky Striker got second place, and Snake Eye Fire King Azamina, the deck, whatever, is now tier one again. Specifically, Snake Eye Fire King Azamina is what won the event, but Sky Striker made second. Let's dive on into the fallout of YCS Niagara, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avery of our 32 year and destroy the ever living YCS boo boo stain off that like and subscribe button. As we climb even higher, the 1500 ladder had to redo that whole flipping intro because I accidentally said YCS Cancun and it's really YCS Niagara. I can't even keep them straight because I didn't read any of the coverage. Also, Konami's blog website needs to be updated because it kept crashing and kept going down when I was trying to read the stuff earlier this evening. Um, but I want to talk about the fallout and all that from YCS Niagara not Cancun, but YCS Cancun does play a role in this because it had about 350 people or so, however many it was. I mean, it's got to be small if Team Sam won the event, right? Like, okay, I'm past the one minute mark, so now I can swear. It had to be under 300 people for Team Sam to win the damn event. So like, yeah. And for anyone who's saying, oh, stop ripping on Team Sam. When they were in the 3v3 and he was playing with Pac, after Pac won, he started coaching Team Sam on how to play the fucking game. Team Sam is a content creator. He's not a competitive player. So I'm going to leave that there. But YCS Niagara Falls had more people, about triple the amount. And by triple, I mean it was under 900. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, again, the YCS that happened in California near the end of last format had, what was it, 900 players like on the dot or something? It didn't even break 1,000. And I had some people saying, well, Avery, in that Southern California place, they're going to be a smaller event and whatever. But to me, I'm like, look, California regionals can get a thousand plus people on a good day. You can't even get a thousand people for a YCS. And I think it was San Mateo. You can't even get a thousand people for a YCS in San Mateo. Uh, WTF, like honestly. So uh, along with all the other fallout, uh, Sky Striker got second place, which was cool to see. Um, Snake Eyes, Fire King, Azamino winning the event, I think really isn't that much of a surprise. There were 13 Snake Eye variants in the top 32. That's, when I did the math, I think that's 80, 81% representation, something like that. Don't quote me on that. Uh, and then there was 10 Snake Eye variants in top 16. That's over 50%. Yeah. Uh, that that deck is broken now. We were saying that for months now, at least I feel like I was. And so, all of this to say... It had under a thousand people because people don't want to play. And honestly, it's a shame because I wish it would have been less than the 800 or so people, whatever it was, uh, 900 people, what, whatever it was, it doesn't matter. I wish it would have been less, but when you have players like Jesse Cotton, Landon Oliver, you know, who won the event, all these big name players who go to these events anyway and not give a shit about making a statement and speaking with their wallets... It's not the, the player base like me and Cali Effect and other people who complain and talk about the problems with the game and then maybe not go to events. It's the players like Jesse Cotton and Landon Oliver and all these other people who still show up to events anyway because, I don't know, they want to glaze the fucking game. And it's weird for me to say that because I am a competitive player. At the same time, I also feel like I'm starting to get jaded because of all the hate that I'm seeing towards the game online. Like, I'm even at the point now I may sell my Snake Eyes as Amina deck. I'm sitting on three Fualos that I pulled from my case that I spent $1,010 on, almost $1,011. It's like $1,010.80. So now I'm like, well, if I can just make profit off the case, then like that's better than a regional invite. Like, why sit on the Fualos? Plus, I don't have any regionals coming up, like, at all. I can't make it to the one in Hollywood, Florida on October 20th. And other than that, there's no regionals. There's no OTS championships. I don't care to play in a case tournament just to get another case of a set that I don't now give a shit about. So it's like, why play the game? Just wait until February when the YCS in Orlando, which is basically my backyard, happens. Just do that. At that point, we got Rise All, a whole new ban list, and whatever. But I'm like... What the fuck was the point of this event? Cancun was very irrelevant because it was the same weekend as the sneak peek premiere for Rage of the Abyss. And then to top it off, Konami unveils the top 16 players of this YCS. Get some shit that you can get at Michael's or a fucking Hobby Lobby. 
What it is, is like, and maybe you can pull up a picture of it because I'm afraid that Konami might copyright strike me or something, but it's literally a rectangular picture frame and you can fit maybe six, seven, eight, maybe nine if you're lucky uh, cards in like the frame. So like, if you remember the blue eyes that came in the Kaiba uh, briefcase, it was in that steel casing, whatever. Imagine one of those, but it's like a long rectangle and you can fit a few cards in there. Maybe take a, you know, a Sony 4K HD electric boogaloo photo, snap that shit into your, I don't know, Hobby Lobby picture frame and stare at it. I'm at a loss for words, ladies and gentlemen. Like, I, what do you even say to that? Like, it was hilarious. I was laughing so hard this morning, joking like these people literally went to Hobby Lobby and shit and like, that's not the prize support that we wanted. You can't turn around and sell a picture frame. And look, I'm not even one of those people. I've talked about why pri why cash prizing would be terrible in the Yu-Gi-Oh community and why the prize support doesn't need to change in that regard. I think giving us product would be great. Like even if you got first place at a YCS and you got say two cases of Rage of the Abyss, I don't think anybody would complain about that. The resell value on that would be insane. Or even just to keep one sealed and open the other, like. That's really good. That's just one of many suggestions that people, well, now I made that suggestion, but many people made suggestions about how to make the pricing better, even if you're not going to do cash pricing, which again, I've talked about why you shouldn't be doing cash pricing. Just look at my Yu-Gi-Oh! prize support it doesn't need a chain of video, shameless plug. But <clears throat> it really, all jokes aside, has me worried about the future of the game as a whole, has me worried about the future of the meta, because now we're basically going to retract into what last format was where snake eye is good af you bell is going to be good tempai is going to be good but if you're not playing one of those three decks you have to hope that i don't know your runic variant deck can work and like you can get there i will say though in regards to variants it was really cool i'm still looking for the deck list of it but it was cool to see that an exodia deck made top 32 at this ycs regardless of the size it's cool to see that someone actually piloted Exodia to a top 32 finish. Because there's a lot of stuff you can do with that deck. Like, you could play the six Mulch Armies with the three Shifters and, like, play it as a going second deck. Maybe you hit two Mulch Armies and you draw into the five pieces. Like, that's funny stuff that you can mess around with. You can main deck D-Fisher. You don't care about your graveyard. Secret Village, all that fun stuff. You play Secret Village against Snake Eyes. If they can't establish a Black Witch or if they try to and you Angel Statue them... Then they don't have a spellcaster. They can't play their deception. They can't play their OSS, their temple, whatever. They need all those spell cards. Bonfire. They're a very spell-heavy deck in that regard. And so I'm really worried about the future. Like all jokes aside about the shitty ass picture frames and everything else. As a player talking, I don't have any events coming up. Can't make it to the last regional of the season of Rage of the Abyss. We're not going to get another regional season until Supreme Darkness in January because typically now Konami will update the regional listings like once for like the US and then if they update them again, it's usually for like Canada locations. I'm not going to play in a remote duel event because it's filled with nothing but fucking cheaters. I don't know why people suddenly think people don't cheat in remote duels anymore because it's very easy to cheat. Like even people have gotten away with printout copies of cards and people haven't realized it. So I'm not going to play in a garbage remote duel event like no, I don't need players to cheat just to like, I don't know, win a box. Like, it's not worth it. And so I'm sitting here like, yeah, I may just turn around and sell all the stuff I pulled out of the Rage of the Abyss, make eleven to $1,200, make profit off of the case, and just move on with my day and just make content. Because at the end of the day, I think that this really is a bad format. Between everything I've talked about in my Yu-Gi-Oh! is in a terrible format video, between things about that I've talked about in the past... <clears throat> This ain't it. This really ain't it. And I've seen all y'all commenting about how you've been, you know, going to other hobbies, playing video games, playing different, uh, you know, card games. One of my friends was trying to get me into Lorcana, and I was like, bro, with my luck, I'm gonna summon a fucking Mickey Mouse in attack mode, and it's gonna get bottomless. Like that's gonna be my luck because I, I honestly, firmly believe I just have dog water luck when it comes to card games, like. I don't know why. Maybe it's just my deck building. I don't know. But between all of that and then even having friends tell me that they're going to be quitting the game, um, obviously we've talked about plenty of times on the channel, my good friend Valley D talking about how he's going to probably get out of the game come February after the YCS. Uh, 
all of that talk when you're constantly hearing that makes it hard to stay in the game competitively. And keep in mind, I've been playing competitively for almost 20 years at this point. This upcoming December will be my 17th year playing Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively. I started back in 2008, two weeks before the Fusion deck name was changed to the Extra deck. I've seen a lot of formats in my time, and this doesn't make me excited for the future. And I'm very worried, especially if we're getting empty-ass fucking picture frames from Hobby Lobby. <laughs> Guys, let me know what you think about this BS dumpster fire down in the comments down below. I hope it gets better. But guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.